Hi everyone, I am so excited to see you again. Well, last time I ventured into Armenian Anushabur, the special uh, Christmas pudding. And today, inspired by a television show we've been watching recently, uh, maybe some of you are also following it, Babylon Berlin. Ta-da! It's a very interesting police story, but in the backdrop of the political situation in Berlin, in Germany during the 1920s, and up to the rise of Nazism and Hitler. Um, and we've been caught into that. And one of the most recent uh, episodes that we watched, the, man, the woman, Elizabeth, who's the landlady, served Mr. Kaltenbach, who is the journalist who's going to uh, blow the whistle on the illegal operations of Lufthansa and the airplanes and stuff like that. She served him goulash. So we thought, why not make goulash for today? Again, I went to uh, on online and tried to see what are the different recipes. There are so many variations. Some people use bacon in it, others don't. Some people use um, anyway, there's so many, many variations, but then the cooking time is what really, really takes a very long time. It's like somewhere between two to three hours of simmering. I think this is important because then the beef becomes really, really tender. So let's start. According to one of the recipes, it says coat the beef with um flour so this is my trick instead of putting the flour and getting it all over the place i'm going to put the beef cut ready for beef stew this is not for vegetarians or vegans this show unfortunately i should put a disclaimer like there is nudity explosions and so on not suitable under 16 they put for movies. In this one, I'm gonna put not suitable for vegans or vegetarians. So I am to totally sorry about that uh, if I'm offending anybody, but this is Hungarian beef goulash and it is with beef. So maybe next time I'll try to do the vegetarian version of it. with Quarter cup flour, which needs to be coating this beef and instead of getting it all over the place I'll put it in this bag and keep tossing it around until all the beef are covered with flour. So we'll set this aside and come back to it when we feel like all the beef has been covered with flour. I like to use my Lacocco Straub of course Nobody is, they're not sponsoring this show, but it's my personal preference because you can make everything and every, anything and everything in it. I even boil my pasta in it and so on. So some of the ingredients, as you can see, have been already prepared. I'm not gonna zoom in and out, so maybe later I'll edit it and show you a little bit more closely. It says two medium-sized onions but I took a fairly big sized ones and I am going to do the onions. It has, I'm gonna put all the ingredients at the bottom afterwards. It has, uh, here it is, I'm looking at it, two teaspoonfuls of butter or lard, it says, but we're not gonna do lard. Some of the um, recipes, like I said, have bacon, which means some of the uh, grease and juices from the bacon mix in as well. We're not doing that. So I'm gonna put the butter and let it melt while I go and cut the onions. So there we go. Cut the onions. Tuck, tuck, tuck. So if I start crying now, you'll know that I'm not crying for my lost dog who went missing two days ago, not. <laughs> but I am crying for the onions. I'm not gonna go all the way. And here we go. We'll wait until it melts a bit. And the rest of it. I 
I cut it so that it's a little bit not all the way because then the whole pieces are going to separate from each other and it's difficult to cut. It will um, slide away from your hand just as it did right now. But there you go. I also like to use my big wooden spoon. So let me mix a little bit this butter. Technically, I should do it on the big fire here, but I want you to see the ingredients. Therefore, I am using this one here. Later on, we might bring it to the big fire. Okay, so this butter is melting. Usually, I like to mix olive oil with my butter, but it didn't say do so. The way, um, what happens when you mix olive oil and butter is that the butter does not burn. Um, the olive oil helps it a little bit and kind of I make everything with olive oil because that's the Mediterranean way it's healthier but since this recipe calls for butter I'm using butter so here is all the onions that we just diced and shredded I'm putting them all in some of them are running away and Add everything and let them simmer until they become translucent. Not burnt, not caramelized, but translucent. Now, just as I like to add a personal touch on every recipe I make, this one, I am going to add green bell peppers. Maybe some uh, purist goulash aficionados or specialists will say, what is she doing? We never use green bell peppers. Well, maybe this is a la Nora. You can call it Hungarian goulash a la Nora. So, We'll wait a little bit. Let's do the rest. So here, here. I like to put the uh, green bell peppers together with the onions because they are a bit juicy and they prevent the onions from burning or uh, charring or whatever, you know? Even though if you mix them, not let them have them happen like that. I, I don't think you can see this, but maybe I can show you like this. Okay, oh, now I'm beginning to cry. And the fumes start rising. So, I will add these. But I don't want to add the carrots. The carrots I'm gonna keep a little later for a little later because I don't want them to melt away. I want them to stay as full carrots and decorate my goulash in a way when I'm serving it. So let this cook a little bit. At this point, I'm going to add paprika. And it says caraway seeds, but again, it's my version. So instead of caraway seeds, I am adding um, cumin. So, and cumin is very good with meat. So it kind of adds a certain unexpected or Middle Eastern zest to it. Well, the zest is not only from lemons, but it can be from anything. So there we go cumin, fresh ground, and paprika. It's organic, it doesn't matter if it's organic or not, but I need to get rid of this cover because I don't want to, yeah. So, ooh, that went quite a bit, but that's fine. So this is like creating a nice little paste in which my meat cubes are going to be added. There you go. 
So I open this bag and here you see how beautifully coated they are and they're just being thrown one way on. I don't want to just mix it like that because all the uh, flour is going to pour in. Although that's not too bad because it will thicken my broth. But for now, let's leave it at that because we can always add a flour later and make it thicker if we want to. But for now, I'm just adding them like so. Wow, made a hole in there. I think I went too close to the fire. Okay. So these Ziplogs come in very, very handy. So now I'm going to mix and fry, or whatever you call it, the beef a little bit in this. And at that point, I want to bring it on the big fire. So here we go. Now that you have already seen the ingredients, you can see what I'm doing. This is already hot, so I'm not going to show it to you. But I am going to add, now that the beef is almost there two or three minutes mix it but not for too long pour it says beef broth but i'm using vegetable broth again my own personal touch is coming in here. So what did we add? We didn't add the bacon, which is a staple with some of the recipes. Instead, I added green bell peppers. I didn't add, I'm not using um, beef stock because I have enough beef in it as is. So I'm using vegetable stock. So it's two cups of vegetable stock. So, there you go, number one, and two. Mix well and let it cook. So, there's another personal ingredient that I'm going to add a little later. As you can see, you guessed it. Mm. Take a sip. It's uh, grape juice, it's not wine. At this point, as it's starting to boil a little bit, I am going to add the potatoes. It's two big diced potatoes add and my carrots one big carrot and I'm left as you can see there are big pieces as well as small pieces depending which end of the carrot they are coming from so that's done that's done that's done now, I'm going to use any type of red wine is just fine and you don't have to use a full glass, that's fine. The other one is for me to drink, but this one is for the food. So add it on top. The wine doesn't stay, you know, because it evaporates. The alcohol evaporates, so in the end, when you eat your food, there is no, practically no alcohol left in it. So you're, you're uh, fine. You don't have to worry about, oh my God, this is an alcoholic dish. It's not. So. Then I'm going to add some tomatoes. 
um, diced tomatoes, but it, it, it really doesn't matter because they come like this. I can cut them to give a more even, uh, wow, I keep forgetting and getting too close to this fire here. Uh, cutting them a bit make them, makes them a bit more evenly distributed in the stew. As you can see, this is basically called Hungarian goulash, but it's the basis of all sorts of stews, you know, the beef stew and whatever stew, some sort of stew. If you add more vegetables, it will become vegetable stew, including some beef in it. So now how to do this in a proper way. So I'm adding these broken down tomatoes, a couple more. Again, the tomatoes, if they are diced and they are, uh, they all melt away, become juice, become sauce, doesn't matter, it does not matter. The reason I'm cutting them is because the recipe says diced tomatoes, although I could have just drop them in their hole because they're not too big. They are Italian tomatoes, which I was lucky enough to find in this store. But you don't have to use that same brand. And I am pouring a little bit of the tomato juice that's in it in here. Now this thing, this concoction, <laughs> is going to be cooking for about an hour and a half. So I'm going to leave you here and then come back when it is a bit more ready. So hi, I'm back. It's not been an hour and a half yet. This is still cooking. I wish I could show it to you. I will at some point and then insert it. Um, however, there are a couple of ingredients that I forgot to tell you about that's very, very important. One of them or two of them are salt and pepper to taste. So this is the amount I decided that it was enough for myself and we're putting it here, the salt and the pepper, adding it to our stew that is simmering right now and mix it well so it goes everywhere and then it's up to you basically how much of that you want to add even though salt is not so good for you so maybe stay away from too much salt and then if you're somebody who likes their food spicy like i do here are some crushed chili peppers which i will add some but of course make sure that we don't go overboard here this is how much i am adding for the entire stew i mean it could be a little too spicy for some tastes but it's good for me then another piece of little secret i love adding black whole black peppers besides the pepper we added like so you know put them in they don't make it very peppery, even though they do give a little oomph or whatever you want to call it. And I love these peppers coming under my teeth every once in a while and me like chewing on this pepper. So again, personal preferences. The actual recipe does not call for red crushed chilies, does not call for whole uh, black peppers and one other thing it does not call for, uh, the Italians say, have a saying which goes come il prezzemolo in ogni minestra, which means he is like prezzemolo, which is um, parsley, ha ha, of course. He is like parsley in every soup, meaning somebody who puts his nose, mixes himself in everybody's business. So I don't have parsley but I have cilantro. So 
as you could see, this started moving away from being a pure Hungarian rhapsody or Hungarian um, goulash, and it started veering more towards the Middle East with all these spices added to it, like the cumin, like the coriander, like the spicy peppers and the black whole peppers. But hey, what's the point of doing something exactly the way that it was done before when it already exists? So this way you're getting a feel of my own personal touch. So it's been an hour this beef is stewing. So I'm going to add the coriander right now. Add a little bit of green to it even though it's better to add it at the very end so they don't turn uh, black or dark and they stay green. But I also want the flavor to mix in. So I'm going to add them now. So here we go. And we'll let it cook for another simmer. Before I forgot to mention to you that when I said it should cook for an hour and a half, it's not on the strong, heavy, big fire, even though I am on the big eye, but on low simmer. So that the piece of meat or the meat pieces that are in it end up becoming very tender it almost melt in your mouth. So I'm going to show you now what it is like. You can see if you can see it. I guess you can. All right, so we'll assume that you can. I'll stop here and then come back and plate it. This has been cooking for a while now. It may or may not have attained the softness and melting point of the meat. <laughs> beef as you would have preferred, but I'm going to plate it to show what it looks like. Okay, maybe I'll get closer there. You see what it looks like? So I will plate this so you can see all the beautiful ingredients in it. And this is how my goulash looks. Ta-da! <laughs> you can also see the steam coming out of it. So it smells delicious. Unfortunately, I cannot convey that into in the video, but you have to take my word for it. And go ahead and try your own version and please share it. By the way, I did never I never meant to do these videos as way of uh, gathering subscriptions but i'm seeing that a lot of people are interested the last one was watched by some 300 people and now who knows what this one's gonna get so why don't you subscribe yeah below subscribe ring the bell i'm doing like all the other people do so that i know that i have a certain number of people who are interested in these recipes and i can bring you more also there is a quiz haha -ha. The winner will get a present. There has been a change since the beginning of this video and now. No, it's not about cleaning up the space. Yes, I did clean up while the beef was stewing. I cleaned up here. I put away all the dirty dishes. I like to work like that so that at the end when your food is ready, your kitchen is pick and span. But there is something else that I changed while we were gone. And those of you who are observant enough to be able to tell me what has changed, little hint, 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 something in the background, I am going to send you a present. Okay, thank you very much. By the way, this goulash, basically you can put um, baked or roasted potatoes next to it but since we already mixed the potatoes into the stew to start with I'm not going to do more potatoes you can also do thick farfalle or um, uh, farfalla like bow tie uh, uh, pasta or you can mix it with any other kind of pasta and use this as a ragu as a 
dish both as a sauce accompanying and as a um, side to the pasta or the pasta being a side to this and the most important ingredient not to forget to accompany it with some very good hearty red wine it could be anything it could be armenian wine there are some excellent armenian wines and i urge you to go online and do a google search and find the wine of your choice cheers everybody bon appetit Pari Ahorjag, that's not in Hungarian, that's in Armenian, because my goulash is kind of a mixture as I am. So, cheers.